whose podcast examines a complicated case, whose podcast examines... So I know that a lot of you guys are probably like, Crazy Town, what are you doing? She is the director of a communications... Sometimes friendship can be deady, deady. So huge thanks, who thanks? I've talked too much already. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a book haul. So it's nothing crazy. It's probably like the last two months. I'm looking at the pile over there, but I've got a mix of pre-orders that came in. I have some lovely gifted books that came my way. I have some books that I bought for myself, obviously. And then I am committed to getting back into my writing journey, to starting the second draft. I have been putting it off. I've been freaked out by it. I have been procrastinating to the high heavens, but I started listening to a bunch of podcasts again, to writers I love talking about craft, and I actually got some great suggestions on a couple of books to read, which I realize this probably sounds like a form of procrastination, but at the same time, they're going to help me make this book better. So. Here we go, let's just dive right into it. I was gonna say all that to say, but I really say that a lot, but I already just said it, so let's dive into the haul. So these books are in no particular order in terms of like purchasing or anything, it's just sort of how they were piled up. So the first book I have is Marion Keyes' Rachel's Holiday. So I talked about this book multiple times. I reread it in April, which I talked to you guys about, but I don't know that you've seen that yet, if you have. If, it's, if I posted it, I will link it up above, you guys know. But when I was listening to this, so this is the 25th anniversary, so I have the original US edition of it that I'm looking at on the table. Let me get that for you guys. So I have the original US. This is the 25th anniversary UK edition. So I know that a lot of you guys are probably like, Crazy Town, what are you doing? So I talked about this when I did my wrap up. I started listening to the audiobook of the 25th anniversary edition because Marion Keys herself narrates it and it was so good, but I was listening and reading along so I could meaningfully mark up my book. And what I realized is back in the 90s, until who knows how long, they would Americanize books. So my version of the book is a little bit different in terms of just wording and I found like in one case like entire paragraphs were missing so I don't know if she went back and added a couple things which seems a little bit silly because it was like a non-essential paragraph but just things that were completely cracking me up I was laughing out loud so much and I love this book to pieces so I was like I need to have the actual 25th anniversary UK edition that is true to the book so I bought this and if you guys have been around here for a hot minute you know I was an avid Marion Keys reader for years. This was one of the first books of hers that I read and just fell in love with her. She is so funny, she's so smart, she's such a great writer. She writes the most beautiful, wonderful characters. This follows a girl named, a woman named Rachel Walsh who was living it up in New York City. She winds up in the hospital after an overdose, which she says was just a night of like excessive partying and winds up being brought back to Dublin where her family is and checked into a rehab. But in Rachel's mind, nothing is wrong with her. She just is like a girl who likes to have a good time and everyone else is like a complete wet blanket. But she's also like, I've heard about this place and like celebs go there. So it's just gonna be this great spa vacation-like thing for a few weeks and then I'll come out and everything will be fine. But as you can imagine, she is forced to confront a lot of her own issues. She is forced to confront her past. And this is told in the timeline of her being in the center in Dublin and then also flashes back to New York so we get her whole story there. I forgot how funny this book was. The audiobook is great and just it's it's heartbreaking and it's very serious topics and it's handled so beautifully, but the cast of characters is magnificent. Highly recommend it. I won't talk that long about every book, I promise you guys. So the next book I have is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. So I picked this up from Thrift Books. I had had my eye on this for a while and I read this in 2020. I had borrowed it from the library and it was sort of on my list as a book that I wanted to get but never got around to it. And then I wanted it and then I found that the hardcover was basically impossible to find. So Thrift Books came through after some massive stocking. It's in great condition, I love it and I can't wait to reread this book. So this is a book that I think was a thousand percent pitched wrong as a romance, and there's a little magical realism to it, but I would not 
shy away from it because people who read it expecting a full romance didn't get what they were looking for because there's such a beautiful story in here. And in this book, we follow this woman named Danny, and she is she is a plotter. She knows what her life is going to be a week from now, a month from now, five years from now. Ding ding ding. And when the book opens, she has just gotten promoted. She's just gotten engaged to her longtime boyfriend. They are living together in New York City. Like everything is absolutely amazing. She goes to sleep that night and she wakes up five years in the future and she is with a different man with a different ring on her finger and she doesn't know what's going on. And then she wakes up the next morning and she's back in her original life. But five years down the road, she meets that man who was in her dream that night and everything starts to come into question. So what I love about this book, and I don't wanna give it away, is the tagline in here is that it is a love story, an unforgettable love story, but it's not the one you were expecting. So I feel like this is one of those books where the setup puts you on a path for expecting one thing and it winds up being something completely different. And I loved it, I cried. There was just so much about this book that I loved. So I highly recommend giving this one a go. It's short. And this is the book that turned me on to Rebecca Searle. So I did pick up one Italian Summer. I haven't read it yet, but anyway, I wanted this in the collection. I wanted a hardcover to match one Italian Summer. The next book I have is An Arc, and this is The Change by Kirsten Miller. So this was kindly sent to me by William Morrow. I obviously, this book just came out last week i want to say at the time of filming this the beginning of may so when i say obviously i've had this for a little while i've had this for a little while so i haven't read it yet but this is one of those books that is getting so much screaming buzz everywhere and if you guys are big bookstagrammers i love jordy from jordy's book club and dennis from scare straight reads and the two of them i think it started with jordy who was like this book is insane and like launched this entire group of us who were like we must read immediately and people were diving into it so i am going to be reading it it just was not working with my plans just yet but this is it says a gloriously entertaining and knife sharp feminist revenge fantasy about three women whose midlife crises bring unexpected new powers putting them on a collision course with the evil that lurks in their wealthy beach town. So this book is set on Long Island and we have a trio of women who are our main characters and they are all in and around 50 years old and they are all coming into menopause and realizing that with that brings them extraordinary powers. So these three women discover a teenage girl whose body was abandoned beside a, re a remote beach. So the police have written the victim off, but the women refuse to buy into that official narrative and their investigation leads to more bodies. So it says, the investigation leads to more bodies, the town's most exclusive enclave, a world of stupendous wealth where the rules don't apply. But with their newfound powers, our three ladies, Joe, Nessa, and Harriet, will take matters into their own hands. So I've just heard like such great things about this book. And I think the approach of women in their 50s talking about menopause, it says it's not over, it's time. And how with menopause, which I feel like has had such a stigma forever, brings these women newfound powers. It just sounds so intriguing to me. And again, I very much trust the opinions of Jordi and Dennis. So I'm excited to look into this one. Um, and again, super grateful to William Morrow for sending it to me. The next two books I have are the writing books I had mentioned. So I was listening to the Sisters in Crime podcast, which led me, of course, down a road to other podcasts. But it was specifically Vanessa Lilly who was talking about how this book, Story Genius by Lisa Crone, changed everything when she was writing one of her books. And this is how to use brain science to go beyond outlining and write a riveting novel. And the asterisk says, before you waste three years writing 327 pages that go nowhere. So Lisa Crone has written several books. I have watched some online classes that she's done. I wanna say she teaches at UCLA and she's been involved in classes with National Novel Writing Month. She has just such a great outlook, great experience. She used to be an agent. I don't know if she used to be an editor, literary agent, TV producer, and story consultant for Warner Brothers. So, she knows what she's doing is the long story short of this one. But I was listening again to that podcast with Vanessa Lilly and then I was listening to multiple podcasts after that and several writers talked about this book and I was like, well, I gotta get on it. This is the one that's gonna change everything for me. So I picked this one up. This is a craft book for writers. And then I was listening to another podcast and I wanna say it was, I'll link it down below for you guys. It's, I, I think it's called Shit No One Tells You About Writing. The shit they don't tell you about writing. Just look it up. 
Yes, so the podcast is called The Shit No One Tells You About Writing. And the topic of this one was writing and rewriting a novel until it's ready and we answer your questions. So I was like, I need to be listening to this one. And they had Matt Bell on the podcast talking about this book, which is called Refuse to Be Done, how to write and rewrite a novel in three drafts. So I was like, ding, 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 I need to do this. So this is one of those books, this just came out and it was like sold out immediately. So I actually went straight to Penguin and bought it directly from their website. Thank you very much. And it came like the next day. So I'm really excited to dive into this one as well. I know everyone finds their own way in, but I am definitely in a, in a moment where like, I need to shake things up. I need sort of a kick to get me going. So this one has like, whether you're a first time novelist or a veteran, strategies to help motivate you to shake up your revision process, how to approach your work. And it just talks about all the things that go into reworking your novel. And I'm very excited for it. I've heard such great things about it. I was not familiar with him at all before going into this. So I will keep you guys posted for those who are interested in the writing side of life. Uh, it's not super long, but I definitely am hoping that this is the thing that's going to push me forward because I need to push forward. The next book I have is Six Stories by Matt Wazalowski. And this one says, one body, six stories, which one is true? So this had been on my list for quite a long time and I finally pulled the trigger on it maybe like a month ago. I haven't read it yet, but it's okay, it's okay. So this is, it says a complex and subtle mystery unfolding like dark origami to reveal the black heart inside. So this is actually kind of like serial, which you guys know I love. And I love me a true crime podcast and this is actually a little, it's called some like inspo and research for what I'm working on. So in this one, we have two timelines. We have 1997 and 2017. In 1997, we are in Sarclaw Fell. The body of teenager Tom Jeffries is found at an outward bound center. Verdict, misadventure, but not everyone is convinced. Then we have 2017 and it says, enter elusive investigative journalist, Scott King whose podcast examinations of complicated cases have rivaled the success of Serial, with his concealed identity making him a cult internet figure. In a series of six interviews, King attempts to work out how the dynamics of a group of idle teenagers conspired with the sinister legends surrounding the Fell to result in Jeffrey's mysterious death. So this is murder mystery and it's his modern twist. So we are getting like the six different stories from six people's point of view. So it's kind of like all transcript, which is also giving me all the Sadie vibes. So I'm really intrigued by this one. This one came out a bit ago, I want to say. And like I said, I heard about it a while ago, 2016, and I finally picked it up. So I'm very excited to dive into this book. The next book I have was gifted to me by one of my subscribers. So Linda, thank you so, 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 so much. This was such a pleasant surprise. And this is The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. So Linda said that she loved this book. Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand had read it, which is why I put it on my wish list. And Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library loved it and gave it to Sarah. So it's like the circle of giving here. So I trust everybody in this list. So this one also came out a little while ago. This is 20, wait for it, 2014. So I had heard about it, but I am obviously late to the party on it. So this one is about a college student named Joe and he is on a deadline to complete a writing assignment for an English class. So my understanding is like he waited to the last minute, he has to interview a stranger and write a bio on them. So he winds up heading to a nearby nursing home and tries to find someone who's willing to talk to him. And he winds up interviewing this guy named Carl, who was a dying Vietnam veteran and a convicted murderer. So Carl was in prison and was released into this nursing home because he is fatally ill and he has been medically paroled, it says. So 30 years in prison for the crimes of rape and murder. So as Joe starts to write about his life and especially his valor in Vietnam, he cannot reconcile the heroism of the soldier with the despicable acts of the convict. So with the help of Lila, his skeptical neighbor, Joe throws himself into uncovering the truth, but he is hamstrung in his efforts by having to deal with his dangerously dysfunctional mother, the guilt of leaving his autistic brother vulnerable and a haunting childhood memory. So it says thread by thread, Joe unravels the tapestry of Carl's conviction. But as he and Lila dig deeper into the circumstances of the crime, the stakes grow higher. Will Joe discover the truth before it's too late to escape the fallout? So this won so many awards out of the gate. And I am just really, really intrigued by this book. And like I said, so Linda said that she loved it. Sarah and Lindsay loved it. Crime, murder, mystery. It sounds like multiple timelines. I love sort of that amateur detective vibe of it all. Here for it. Totally here for it. Thank you, Linda. 
Okay, a few more to go. So the next one is Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. This is her romance debut, which came out in April. If you guys watched my vlog, you would have seen me talk about this. I got the audiobook of this from my library. So I loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which was her thriller. And when I heard this was coming out, I was like, I definitely love her as a writer, but I'm a little bit like not a huge go-to pre-order auto buy rom-com kind of a person. I was, I've talked about this, page one of the audiobook, I was laughing out loud. I had to rewind it because I was like, did she just say that? And I was like, she just said that. <laughs> I was like, must immediately purchase this book. So on that walk I took that morning, I was like, um, I don't know if I'm like 50 pages into this. Is it too soon to say five star? So spoiler alert, I read it. It is a five star. I absolutely love this book. So this is a book about a woman named Lee and she basically kicks ass, takes names. She is the head of communications at this female run electric car company, which is like better than Tesla, thank you very much. And by day, she is businesswoman extraordinaire, hyper successful. And by night, she is party girl extraordinaire and just out having fun, living her life. She has learned one lesson in her life, which is trust no man. So she just goes out and has fun and doesn't get attached to anyone emotionally. And then enters Ben, who was her final heartbreak. He is the one where he left the state of Texas when they broke up, but he is back now. And as fate would have it, they are brought together to work on this energy bill that she is trying to push through. He works at the governor's office. It's a whole thing, but just trust. It all makes sense in the end, <laughs> but they are forced to work together. So it is like lovers to enemies to dot, dot, dot. What will happen here? but it is shenanigans, it is funny, it is like heartbreaking, there's tears. She has the best extended group of friends and family. I absolutely loved everybody in this book. I did a mix of audio and reading it because I could not consume this book fast enough. The audiobook is tremendous. There are parts in this that are laugh out loud funny to me and I definitely think the audio narrator elevated it that I don't know if I would have had the same laugh out loud experience reading it, but the way that she just inflected some of the things that happen in this book, but I absolutely loved it. It's, it's steamy. It's emotional. It is kick-ass. Like I said, it is just like the power of powerful women, the strength of women, the strength of friendships, and then the relationship and working through your own stuff and confront confronting your past. Everything about this is absolutely magnificent. Ashley Winstead is an auto buy. Whatever she writes, I will read author. And I just love her to bits. So that's, yep, bought this while I was listening to it. Loved it. Next up is a pre-order I have, which I got from Book Depository. So this is Outside by Ragnar Yonason. So this comes out in the US in, I wanna say end of June. I'll leave the date down below for you guys, but I didn't wanna wait. And I also loved the UK cover, so I picked it up already. So this is a standalone and this is four friends, one night, not everyone will come out alive. That was really all I needed to know. So this is a deadly Icelandic snowstorm and four friends seek shelter in an abandoned hunting lodge. No, not gonna end well. Miles from help and knowing they will die out in the cold, they break in hoping to wait out the storm until morning, but nothing prepares them for what's inside. So they are forced to spend a long terrifying night inside this cabin, watching as intently and silently as they themselves are being watched. As the night darkens, old secrets spill into the light and tensions rise between the four friends. This is everything I love. Soon it's clear that what they discovered in the cabin is far from the only mystery lurking here, nor the only thing to be afraid of. So claustrophobic, dark, creepy, chilling. I love the mess of friendships and I can't wait to see more of it. I can't wait to see more of it. Can't wait to read it. Can't wait to learn how to talk today. <laughs> so I picked this one up as a pre-order. And then another pre-order I had is One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. So this is another book that I had heard, I want to say it was Dennis from Scared Straight Reads raving about, as well as so many other people on Instagram who had arcs of it. And I was, I was having FOMO and I just needed to know and I needed to be a part of the party, so I ordered it. So this one says, Opulence, Sex, Betrayal. Sometimes friendship can be deadly. Meet the women of Buckhead, a place of expensive cars, huge houses, and competitive friendships. So we have four friends, Shannon, Crystal, Olivia, and Jenny. And it says, who amongst them will be clever enough to survive Buckhead and who will wind up dead? They say that friendships can be complex, but no one said it could ever be this deadly. So I don't like to know a lot 
going into a thriller, as you guys know. So I'm gonna leave it at that. There's descriptions about each of, each of the ladies, but I'm just gonna like let you guys have a little bit of uh, anticipation as well. But I feel like this was compared to maybe Heather's or Mean Girls or am I making all of that kind of stuff up? But I'm really excited for it. And again, I've heard such great free buzz on it and I just couldn't wait to dive in. And then the last book I have is a Goodreads giveaway that I want of an ARC by one of my favorite authors that I've talked about on here. And this is Long Gone by Joanna Schaffenhausen. So this is actually book number two in her second series, the Detective Annalisa Vega series, which means I need to get on book number one. So this comes out in August. I am not gonna read the back of it because I haven't read book one and I don't want to find out anything that's gonna ruin book number one. But she also wrote The Vanishing Season and that series with Ellery Hathaway, who I completely enjoy, love. That is a detective and an FBI agent, and that is now a five book series. So I just, you know, the proof that eventually, if you enter enough giveaways, somebody actually, you actually win a giveaway on Goodreads. But I love this cover. I love her as an author. I am just very excited to get into her new series. So I still need to finish her first series, but I am super excited for this as well. And I'm super grateful to win it. So, so, so cool. And I love the cover. Did I already say that? I feel like I can't even like hold a straight thought today, but very excited about this. So huge thanks to Minotaur and Joanna Schaffenhausen and Goodreads for the giveaway. I get so excited. There's like nothing cool. Like how many times do you get that email from Goodreads? It's like, Thanks, but you didn't win. Thanks, but you didn't win. And then I got this and I was like, oh my God, I actually won. I felt so special. So very excited. And like I said, I still need to read book number one. So I will keep you guys posted, but hooray. So that's gonna do it for my book haul. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books, if you picked up anything lately that you're excited for. I definitely feel like mid late summer, a whole bunch of pre-orders are gonna come in in droves but I'm going to kind of put a pin in things for now is my game plan. I certainly have plenty to keep me busy. And like I said, I really need to slash want to focus on my writing. And I have found every excuse in the book, um, including decluttering to keep me out of it, but it's time to dive back in and I want to, and I'm going to see, I might actually document that journey. I don't know if I'm going to, or if I'm going to document it, but I don't know if I'm going to put it out there. I don't know if people are interested in that side of things, but let me know how you guys are doing. Thank you so much for hanging out today and being here for today's video. I always appreciate you guys being around and I will see you guys in another one. Bye everybody.